fly lines the most important part of your fly fishing outfit and if you argue with me let's do a quick thought experiment let's picture a fly fisherman now I can almost guarantee you that you're picturing somebody with a fly rod casting and at the end of that fly rod is a beautiful tight loop of fly line take away the fly line in that picture for a second what do you have now it's just an angler holding a fly or rather a, a fishing rod we we can't tell it's an actual fly rod or if it's a float rod or whatever see now it's our identity as a fly fisherman it is the fly line that truly is the most important part of fly fishing and of course this is my opinion and i'm trying to make a great argument for it but Let's go into why I think that is and why you might agree or disagree with me. So without further ado, let's get into it. Why do we need fly line in the first place? Well, fly line essentially takes the energy that we create through our casting stroke and takes that energy from the fly rod and transfers it all the way to the leader and then finally to the fly. So it does a lot for us now I know it sounds a little boring and whatnot but it's anything but boring it is so dynamic and if you choose the wrong fly line for your rod or um, you choose the wrong uh, setup leader and uh, the wrong um, uh, fly even then your fly line's not going to be able to do its job the fly line really dictates what you can do with your rod and what uh, you can fish with your rod. So it's it's a really big deal. Now, when I was a beginner, I didn't really understand how important it was. I did read some uh, articles on how important fly line was. And it was, to tell you the honest truth, uh, when you're a beginner, to, it's almost unfathomable to be able to go out and spend like $100 on a quality fly line when I could be spending $100 on some flies and, uh, you know, the fun stuff, the fun tackle part of fly fishing. Because really, um, when you're a beginner and you're looking at fly lines, it's super boring, but you have no idea what you're missing out on. You could have a way tighter loop. You could have better, uh, better distance, better performance, better feel, all of the above which is simply spending a couple minutes and figuring out what fly lines really are. So let's get into, you know, kind of like a little bit of the anatomy and then we'll progressively get more and more confused as we go along. So let's get into that. Now there's sinking fly lines and there's a whole array of fly lines out there to tell you the honest truth, but I want to stick to the floating fly line and here's why. It actually is the most versatile. If you're a beginner, I know the advanced uh, folks out there, you guys already know this, but for a beginner, you might be saying, well, a floating fly line really is only for casting dry flies or, or something close up to the top. That's absolutely false. It really, you know what, it really has to do with your leader setup. So when it comes to what's the most important part of uh, your fly fishing outfit, you know what comes in uh, a very close second? So it's the runner up. And I'm talking about it just uh, like fly lines just won by a, a, a frog hair is your leader. Your leader is the second part of the equation, but that's another story for another video. But just know that a fly line, a floating fly line with the proper leader setup could fish any depth you really want. Um, you can stay on top or you can go down to 20 feet if you want. It's, it's really the leader that helps out. But don't forget the fundamental that the fly line essentially takes the energy from your fly rod and trickles it down to your uh, fly. Well, your leader first and then your fly. But that's really what it does. It just transfers the energy. And like I said earlier, if you choose the wrong one, then you're in trouble. So what are fly lines made out of? There's a bunch of stuff, but in general terms, a floating fly line is going to be uh, a braided core. Now you might see some that have like a, uh, that have a, a, a mono core, but mono cores aren't really uh, floating fly lines, but I guess in a weird way it can be, but let's not get lost in the minutia of things today. We're going to just talk about like the braided core and then the coating. 
The coatings could be polyurethane or PVC, and depending on who uh, and uh, who manufactures it, there could be other things like textures on it or extra floatants and all that on there. And uh, one manufacturer might tout that their line is more supple and and this and that and blah blah blah. All you really need to care about is if that fly line will work for your fly rod. So fly lines are based on the AFTM rating. So what is that? It's essentially, you know, when you hear four weight, six weight, seven weight, eight weight, so on and so forth, um, fly lines are no different. That's how they are uh, uh, categorized in, in, in the AFTM rating. So what you would what you would think would be appropriate is a six weight rod takes a six weight fly line. But this is where things kind of get a little confusing because if you follow that, um, if you follow that, sometimes you're going to get a fly line that's not going to work for your fly rod and you're going to kind of be left there scratching your head. Now, you, what you really want to do is think about the grain weights and come enter Dr. Hanneman's common sense system. Before I get into any of this stuff with you, I want to say that there's a really simple way of finding out what fly line will work for your fly rod. So for the beginners, if this is if you don't want to get into the weeds with me and I don't blame you, going down the rabbit hole kind of gets a little confusing and um, if the first time around reading or, or watching a video like this will kind of discourage you in a little way. So stop right now and all you got to do is take your fly rod and look at the, who, whomever manufactured it, contact them and tell them, hey, I have, um, let's say, um, like my Orvis Clearwater. So call up Orvis, say you have a Clearwater in this weight and be absolutely honest with them about what you want to fish with it. So if you're just a dry fly kind of person, you're going to say, I have this uh, weight rod and I want to just cast dry flies. What is the best rod? You know, the thing is, is that most fly rod manufacturers don't just um, recommend, I mean, they're always going to recommend their proprietary uh, fly line, but they are very aware of the other fly line manufacturers and they will steer you in a multitude of directions, but ultimately they will give you some options and all of the options I can safely say have been great. Uh, I have used this with TFO and Orvis and, uh, and a few other uh, rod manufacturers and they've all been able able to send me in the right direction. Now for the rest of us that want to get a little more into the weeds and kind of figure out um, how to do this kind of stuff on our own and really give us a lot more knowledge and insight into what a fl a what fly line really will fit your uh, fly rod. Well, let's get into that right now. So Dr. William Hanneman made this wonderful um, expose of the uh, fly line and fly rod industry and uh, essentially I don't know I guess it is to me it's an expose but anyways he noticed that some rods would be touted as a very fast five weight when in fact they weren't a five weight at all they were a six weight so if you were to look at it that way then you would have to line your weight, uh, your line to a six weight line in order to get the performance out of your five weight. So he started to see that this AFTM rating system was kind of, um, I'm not sure the term I want to use here. I got to be very careful here, but essentially there was uh, some confusion. Let's just put it that way. So he came up with a system. And this system is very simple. I'm going to link everything at the bottom here so uh, in the in the description so you can go and you can do this yourself. But I'm just going to I'm going to probably butcher it to tell the honest truth, but essentially what you do is you take your fly rod and you set it up and you take some measurements of your fly rod and then you uh, at the end of the tip you start to put little pennies the common sense system. Uh, and you put uh, little pennies uh, inside a little cup and weight down your fly rod. And the tip is going to keep going down and down and then it gets to a certain measurement and then you measure that. Then you take those measurements and you go onto his table and that table will then give you uh, a bunch of um, um, uh, the grain weight that will be matched perfectly with your fly rod. I know I'm butchering this, but I just take my word for it that 
go and read this channel or uh, this this wonderful website from start to finish. It's great. You can do it in an evening, and you're gonna know way more than I could ever give you in this in this little video here. Just know that you're going to uh, know what grain weight's gonna work for your fly rod as well. You're gonna see the action because as you load up your fly rod with uh, with pennies, you're gonna see the flex of your fly uh, rod and then you'll be able to see the action of your fly rod and it's so cool because when you get that insight then you start knowing what your fly rod is actually capable of doing there's also a youtube channel and i can't recall exactly uh who made the the video but i'm gonna figure that out and i'm gonna show that and it's gonna be right on this side or this side i don't know but it does a way better job than I could ever do. And I'm telling you, go on their website or uh, their channel and watch that video. And then I think they used to they used to have a calculator where all you have to do is just enter the number in there and then it would give you the grain weight of your fly rod. And that's all you need to do. I know you might be a little confused, but essentially all you're doing is trying to find out what your fly rod is capable of handling as far as grain weights. Because at the end of the day, grain weights and mass is what's going to transfer the energy and is going to be able to present your flies in the manner that they're supposed to be presented in. Think in grain weights rather than uh, fly weights. You get what I'm saying here? Okay. So now you know the grain weight that will work for your fly rod. Now you want to kind of figure out what floating fly line to get for your fly rod. And there is, there's again, another crazy confusion uh, when it comes to that because there's tons of choices. Heck, when it comes to a dry fly, uh, fly line, there could be like four or five different uh, tapers from one manufacturer. And those could just basically have a, a slight um, uh, taper in the, uh, in, in, the, in the front section. So where the terminal end is, where the head of the, of the fly line is. Uh, and some could be really whispery thin for very delicate presentations. So without further ado, let's just talk about a few tapers. So one of the, the like one of the OG tapers uh, and one that's kind of falling out of popularity, which I think is a, is a mistake and uh, worth looking at is the double taper fly line. And as the name suggests, it tapers on both sides, the uh, real end and the terminal end. Now, people uh, sometimes what they'll do is when one end um, starts to get all dry and cracky and whatever, they'll flip it around and use the other end. And so you get another, you know, maybe year or so out of the fly line. So it's kind of kind of a frugal way of looking at it. So what can a double taper do? Well, double tapers do, I think, a lot of cool things. They could, they could do anything you really want them to do, but they have some limitations. But primarily, they, um, they're meant for like more old school fishing approaches. So think about like wet flies and dry flies, but like very fine presentations of these things. Um, they roll cast like you wouldn't believe. Uh, they're incredible at roll casting. They're probably the best at roll casting to tell you the truth. And uh, as far as like single fly lines are, are concerned, um, single handed fly lines are concerned. But um, another thing that they do really well is um, they... Um, they just be they're able to present flies without like a big huge splash and that's because they have that very thin taper as well um some nymph fishermen really swear by this taper um yeah that's cool i mean it's all just like a more old school approach like those wet fly presentations where you're swinging i'm telling you right now if you're into just like having a very nice easy slower relaxed pace of fly fishing a double taper is where it's at <laughs> Oh, hold on a second. How do I want to do this? Let's, you know what? We're going to go from uh, wild to mild. So when it comes to weight forward fly lines, there's a bunch of weight forward fly lines. And I know there's all sorts of types of floating fly lines, but for the most part, the double taper and the weight forward is what your 99.9% .9 of, of people are going to be using. And I understand that there's Skagit and Scandi and all that, but we're talking about single-handed stuff and we're talking about the majority of fly fishermen. So we're just going to do that today. So weight forward fly lines are essentially that. They're weight forward, but the way the weight is distributed in the weight forward portion is what's really um, the important part. 
Now, remember when I was talking about grain weights earlier? Well, how do they really measure the grain weights of a fly line? And I'm glad that uh, you're still with me so you can figure that with, uh, out with me. So the first, and now this is, of course, there's some exceptions to the rule, but primarily and usually the first 30 feet from of the head is measured in the grain weights. So the first 30 feet, they will measure and they'll give you the grain weights. So, for, you know, on average, what you'll see for a five weight is 140 grains. OK, so that means the first 30 feet, if you chopped it off there and you put it on a, on a gram scale or a grain scale, rather, you're going to get 140. You should at least. So given that when it comes to uh, fly line design, it's the fly rod or the fly rod. Uh, little tongue tied for a second, the fly line manufacturer will manipulate where that mass goes and where the belly of the fly line goes and where the rear taper goes. And that's, a, that's very important because the anatomy of a fly line is essentially that. You have the head, you have the running line, and in the front, the head could do a multitude of things. So given that, if we're going to talk about certain types of tapers, let's talk about the most wild taper there is, and that's the mass forward type of taper. And that is basically thinking about having all the mass right up at the head. And the head taper is going to be about 10 feet or less. It's going to be very abrupt. And the reason for that is so you can push a lot of fly out there and what i mean by that is these are great for like streamers or very wind resistant rigs like um uh like a like a really big fat chubby chernobyl or uh you know like poppers that kind of stuff or even some heavy indicator rigs now one thing to note when you're going to use this for like indicator rigs and stuff you're not necessarily going to get the best mending with with a fly line like this because usually that the mass is all up at the front and then it tapers down to the running line pretty abruptly sometimes it's it's a little more gradual but for the most part it's not gradual enough for you to mend at any distance so just be wary of uh, those types of fly lines if you're trying to do it all with it because it's not going to be able to do everything well. But these are really good for like um, uh, even close quarter type fishing where you need to be able to load your rod up very quickly. Uh, another thing that they're great for is if you're in a canoe or a kayak, these uh, so you don't have to really spend too much time false casting. They load the, li the rod up very well. The general taper. Now, as the name suggests, it does basically everything. You know, it can do dry flies, it can do uh, indicators, so on and so forth. Like it, it does everything well. And now the construction of these are usually uh, a lot more mellow than uh, that really crazy heavy mast front taper. So you still are gonna have a pretty good front taper to this uh, rod, but it's gonna be, or line rather. I, I'm gonna keep saying rod and line. So just, <laughs> I apologize, get used to it. But essentially what you're going to see is that they're going to um, have a more gradual taper in the front, not too gradual. And we'll get into one of those in a second, but it's not going to be as abrupt like a heavy mass taper line. And you're going to get a more, more substantial uh, belly in this uh, fly line. And then, of course, the taper is going to be nice. Uh, usually it's it's pretty good. It's pretty nice into the running line. And that's so you can do a multitude of things. So you'd be able to um, mend easier with dry flies and indicator rigs and nymphing and all that. And you'll still have enough mass to be able to cast out most streamers and everything. <laughs> Indicator lines are, uh, and there's a bunch of indicator lines for different types of indicator setups, but in general, what you're going to see is these things have a pretty substantially long belly, sometimes like 50 feet, if not more, and um, they gradually taper out into the running line, and they s most of the time uh, have a um, not as much weight in in the in the weight forward part. Uh, and um, the uh, the head of them has a pretty nice, easy um, uh, taper as well. And the reason for that is so you can mend at greater distances and you can mend if there's conflicting currents and everything. And it has enough mass that it can uh, that it can shoot out um, like a substantial amount of split shot and everything. So uh, as much as this line um, uh, doesn't look like it has a lot of mass. It's actually pretty thick and the mass is is still in the front uh, and then it, it but the taper just kind of gently tapers out in that belly and then so on and so forth. 
but just so you know that the way it's designed is really so you can mend uh, your indicator rigs very, very well. Now, if you want, this is where, um, you know, sometimes like a five weight won't be able to do what an eight weight can do as far as indicators. So if you're going to go for like steelhead and stuff like that, you're going to want a, a heavier mass type of indicator uh, line. And that's when you're going to have to bump up in fly rod sizes rather than line sizes, because then you'll overload your lot rod and all that kind of stuff. But I think I'm going to get you lost in the weeds again. So we're going to move on forward. So dry fly uh, tapers, dry fly tapers are, uh, and of course there's tons of dry fly tapers as well, but in general, it's going to be a lot more mellow. So we're still going to have a longer belly so um, we can mend a, a dry fly at, you know, some distance uh, as well. We're going to have that nice gentle smoothness into the running line and there's, and the head is going to be nice and gentle there as well, but we're still going to have a weight forward fly line, but of course it's just going to it's going to be more mellow. Okay. So I'm just scratching the surface when it comes to profiles and tapers and all that. But for the general, for the general public or for the, 